the closing years of the last century, the outlaws of the Southwest were chiefly men of direct action, taking their tribute from society at the point of a six-gun or a Winchester. During these years, it became the task of a young physician to expose a new type of criminal wanted by less violent methods. Rex Allen stars as the Frontier Doctor. By the spring of 1898, the town of Bristol had built up a reputation for being the most lawless spot in the territory. For some time, I'd been wondering how my old friend and colleague, Dr. Marshall, was getting along in the middle of all this violence. It wasn't long before I found out. I just wanted to see if you were alive. Just resting my eyes. Hello, Bill. When I got your message, I came running. What's the case? It's a complicated one, Bill. The patient is over 60. There's an occasionally irregular heartbeat, frequent attacks of indigestion, general lassitude, and some mental vagueness. Can you suggest a treatment? How many times have you told me never to diagnose a case without seeing the patient? You're seeing him now. So that's it. Well, I can tell you already it's just a plain case of overwork. And you didn't need me to tell you that. Sounds like another trick. <laughs> back and give the dock room to work. He's dead. Take him into the back room. There's nothing for you to do, Bill. This is a job for the car. That's me. See you back at the office. All right. Who was it? Lon Gordon. He rode with the Bill Cook gang. They specialized in bank robberies. Inquest over already? Sure. I've signed the man's death certificate, and they're putting his body in a coffin right now to ship back to his folks in Oklahoma. Doesn't that take care of everything? Yeah, I guess it does. All except your case. Huh? If you're taking care of all this coroner work, along with your regular practice, it's easy for me to see why you need a vacation. Who said anything about a vacation? Look, I know the whole countryside's been depending on you for the last 30 years. But they're going to have to learn to do without you sooner or later. And if you don't take a rest, it's going to be sooner. We've got another job for the coroner, Doc. Who is it now? Grant Wheeler. One of the bunch that stuck up the train over by Wilcox. See you later, Bill. Hey, what's keeping you? I got tired sitting over there all by myself. Oh, all right. So you're here now, you might as well meet the bunch. This is Farrell Bradley, who owns this deadfall. Sheriff Miles. Dr. Bill Baxter. Have a drink. No, thanks. Inquest over? Yes, signed, sealed, and corpse ready for delivery. Doc's had so much practice by now, he runs them through in a hurry. Yeah, Doc, you seem to be getting all the official business around town. I haven't even made an arrest all month. Why should you kick? You've got a good orderly town. Excuse me. 
It's just that it's not exactly healthy for outlaws. As long as it's just a wild bunch getting gunned, it's all right with me. But if anybody starts making trouble for the local folks, things will be different. I gotta get back to the office. See you again. Nice to meet you. Where I went to medical school, Doc, this stuff wasn't prescribed for what you've got. I know, I know. I ought to start that vacation right now. Be the smartest thing you ever did. Come on, I'll help you get packed and you can be on your way. Hi, Doc. Is that Doc Marshall I just saw leaving town? Yeah. Emergency call? No, I just put him on his horse. He's about all in. He's going to take a little rest, and I'm going to watch his practice while he's gone. You ain't taking over the coroner job, too, are you? Oh, I'd have to have an official appointment for that. I was sort of hoping there wouldn't be any need for any more inquests till Doc gets back. Yeah, sure be a good thing. You don't seem very sure of the chances. Killing's that regular around here? Quite a few lately. Are they always outlaws? Yeah. Usually tangled with some other gunslinger, or else it's a dry gulching like that one this afternoon. Seems kind of funny they happen so often in this town. Well, these owl hoots have to be picked up sometime, somewhere. No wonder Doc was all beat down. He had to take care of all these coroner cases, didn't he? Yeah, but you don't have to, so quit worrying about it. Well, the best place to spread the word is a new Doc in town is inside. Come on. Miss Rita? Howdy, Sheriff. Hello, Doc. Why, hello. How do you do? Dr. Bill Baxter? Miss Rita Lang. Pleased to meet you, Doctor. You're new around here, aren't you? Yes, I am. He's a friend of Doc Marshall's. As a matter of fact, he's taken Doc's place while the old boy's on vacation. What? Doc's left town? When? Just a few minutes ago. Where did he go? When will he be back? Went out to his friend Mark Henry's place to rest up for a while. A couple of weeks, maybe longer. Hey, Farrell! I don't care what he said. Don't give him any more. Excuse me. Pardon. Sit down, Doctor. I'll pour you a drink. No, thanks. Just to be sociable, I will have a cup of coffee. Bartender, a cup of coffee. You're sure something different with this town. People wouldn't have much confidence in me as a doctor if they saw me sitting around drinking and gambling in the bar, now would they? How right you are. I didn't flatter myself that I was getting all this attention just for personal reasons. It was a good guess that Rita was building up to a request for some special favor, or else she was trying to use me to make Pharaoh jealous. I had an appointment with Dr. Marshall tomorrow. I'm glad it's going to be you. I want to talk to you, Rita. I'm busy. All right. See you later, Doc. Come on. Rita told me that Pharaoh accused her of lying and threatened to kill her when she told him she was going to have a baby and he was the father. But, Doc, I'm sure I'm right. Can't you just give me a note saying you think so, too? Please, it means so much to me. I understand. Look, this isn't urgent. Why don't you wait for Dr. Marshall to come back? He knows your case a lot better than I do. That old fogey. Well, he's a better doctor than I am. Why don't you want him? I just don't think he'll give me a straight answer. You'll have to explain that. They don't come any more honest than Doc. Sure, I know. Farrell got him that coroner's job. So Doc is obligated to him. He might not want to tell him something he wouldn't like to hear. All right, I'll continue with your case if you wish. Drop in next week. All right, Doctor. I felt sure something was wrong around this town. Those killings were happening too regularly and being covered up too smoothly. And Rita's remarks confirmed my fear that my old friend Doc might be implicated. Since everything seemed to center around Pharaoh's saloon. You heard him, get going. I'll go when I'm ready. You're going right now. Get in the back room and stay out of sight.
you're getting pretty well acquainted with the boys, Doc. You want to file a complaint with me? Oh, I had a little disagreement with some of Farrell's bouncers. That ain't hard to do. You sure you're all right? Yeah, I'll make it. You look better anyway. Yeah, I guess I'll live. Went over to Farrell's just to check up on things. Heard him ordering Luke to ride out and bring Doc Marshall back to town. Thought you might be interested. I sure am. Nobody was going to bring Doc back if I could help it, so I headed for the livery stable to get a horse. Luke had a head start on me, but he probably wouldn't be in any hurry. And I knew a few cross-country shortcuts. What's up now? You alone? Yes, Mark and the missus went to town. Farrell sent a man out here to get you. I met him first. Some tough looking character just hit town. Probably another outlaw. Said something about wanting to see the coroner real quick. Doc? Yeah? I think it's time you and I had an understanding. I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on in town and I think I can get you out of this mess. But it would sure help if you'd just break down and tell me the whole story. I suppose I should. It started back in Chicago when I was young. Younger than you are now. The patient was dying of cancer. Absolutely hopeless. And suffering horribly. All I could do was to dope him with opium. Too much. His heart couldn't take it. But the papers said that it was a mercy killing. The authorities decided that there weren't enough grounds for criminal action, but the medical board revoked my license. And you've been practicing all this time without one. Strictly illegal. But after all the good you've done, Doc, I... That's how I excuse myself. I felt justified until Farrell Bradley came out here. His family were patients of mine in Chicago, and he recognized me. He put the pressure on me gradually. First, he had me appointed coroner. Then he started telling me what death certificates to sign. You mean that some of those men you certified weren't dead? None of them were. Any outlaw with enough money can make a deal with Farrell to have himself officially declared dead. That takes the law off his trail, move to another territory, change his name, start in business again. But I've had all I want. I'm going back with you right now and give myself up. Just a minute. Do you think Farrell would have something to say about that? Well, of course, but that can't be helped. I think I know a way to get Farrell out of the picture. Are you crazy? You can't buck Farrell and all his gunmen? Maybe not, but I can get them started to fighting among themselves. Bill, I won't let you do it. Doc, I don't see how you can stop me. See you later. Lang. Hello, Doctor. It, do you want to see me again already? Yes, I do. But we can't talk out here. Uh, uh, what about your office? After telling me what Farrow did to you for coming to see me in the first place, I don't think it'd be wise. How about your room? Oh, no. You know how Farrow is. Couldn't you arrange maybe to get him out of town for the afternoon? Is what you had to talk to me about that important? I think so. I guess I can. Meet me at the back door of my room at 2 o'clock. I'll be there. Bye.
got a lot of nerve coming in here, Doc. Farrell around? No. The man still here that was asking about the coroner? I just work here. It's too bad. I had an important message for him from Dr. Marshall. Sit down. I'll handle this. Marshal, when will he be back? Not until Farrell tells him to. Hmm? I thought you... Why shouldn't Farrell want him back now? Your guess is as good as mine. Could be Farrell's stall until you get ready to pay a little more for your deal. Tin one better not try to rig any games on me. When will Farrell be back? Maybe a couple of hours. I'll still be here. Two o'clock. I thought you were coming to see me. I was. I'm sorry I'm late. I just came in here to... I hope you're on the level, Doc. But I'm not taking any chances. So you better wait around here till Farrell gets back. Boys, the doctor's waiting to see Farrell. Make sure that he does. I thought I'd planned things pretty well, and enough to start an explosion in Farrell's organization. But now, thanks to Rita, it looked like I was going to be right in the middle of the fireworks. Farrell, you and I are going to have a showdown right now. I told you to keep out of sight. Never mind that. I've been talking to this young doc and he Let your mouth shut. Come here, Doc. Look here, Farrell, let's talk this thing over. We sure will. We'll go to some nice, quiet place to do it. Come with us. I didn't expect Farrell to make his appearance at that moment because I had learned from Rita that all the gunmen that Farrell had declared legally dead we're waiting for him in Box Canyon, preparing to stage one of the biggest train robberies in the Southwest. You two get mounted. We're heading out of the west end of town. Go ahead so I can watch you.
Bert Albert. You won't be sticking up any more trains for quite a spell, Bert. Let's get him into town where you can patch him up. With Farrow dead, the sheriff and I took the wounded Bert Alvord in, while a posse captured the remaining members of the gang that were still alive. I got Alvord patched up. You'll live to stand trial. Good. Looks like you lost a patient. I just heard Rita pulled out of town on last night's stage. <laughs> I'll try to get over it. Fine. What are you doing here? Just what I said I would. As soon as I heard Farrow was out of the way, I came here to give myself up for practicing medicine illegally. <laughs> I've learned my lesson. It's no use trying to fool the law, even if you do think that you're justified. I'm going to clean the slate and take whatever penalty they hand me. It'll take 12 men to convict you, Doc. Sure, I know that. And where do you think they're going to find 12 men in this county who haven't been one of your grateful patients at one time or another? Good luck, Doc. Thanks, Will. With the death of Pharaoh Bradley, his $100,000 scheme of protecting notorious killer outlaws came to an end. The little town of Bristol once again became a friendly and law-abiding place to live.